to look at how to set up your calendar. I mean, with the first lesson was going over business planning. This ties right into that. So here are some things that should be on your calendar. Let me get over here. You should have referral time. So this can be you calling your vendors. You can be calling anyone in your contacts list. You should be making 10 to 20 calls a day anyway, especially Monday through Friday, and then reach out to them and be like, Hey, you know, when you, for example, my lenders, they've given me one or two referrals per year, usually. So as my home inspector, so I call them and say, Hey, I want to grow my business. I'm looking forward to helping you at the same time. Are you willing to reciprocate and give me one or two referrals per year so that we can all grow together? If they're not willing to do that, then you probably want to get a different vendor. You can also be calling everyone in your contacts list and going through and letting them know and be like, okay, you know, this is where it's going to go. And I'm new realtor, for example, if I'm the end of 2021 right now. So I'd call my contact and say, well, this is Andrew. I'm looking forward to boost my business next year. I was just reaching out to you to see how you're doing. You know, hey, you know, I'm a realtor. I'm looking for anyone looking to buy or sell. Are you looking for that? You know, something like that along a rough script, something like that. And then you can talk to every single person in your contacts. It'll be a way to kind of go through and get that done. You should also have a time on your calendar when you're going to show. This way, it's not like the client says, hey, I want to see a house today. And you're like, okay, let's go right now. Because you might have something else on the calendar. And you just let them know ahead of time. Hey, that's great. I have an appointment at 5 or 6. What time works better for you today? And if they're just like, oh, oh, no. And then, of course, if you need to, you might want to make one or two changes. But you can't be ridiculous. Like if they can only see Thursday at 4 because of work, you're not going to refuse because your appointment's at 5. Use common sense. But you should have it on your calendar so you kind of know you're organized and where you're going. Have a time to follow up with your clients. Once you start sending in and having multiple clients that are pre-approved and they're looking at homes, you know, part of that time can be to just to call them. Say, hey, I sent you some homes. Any of them look good. Do you want me to adjust your search? Anything like that. Follow up and take care of it. Follow up with your pre-approvals. When you're sending in clients to get pre-approved or calling listing appointments, that works the same way. You know, follow up on those. Say, hey, you know, how's it going? I know that. You call the lender. Hey, I sent these in. I want to follow up and see how they're doing. If your lender won't answer their phone and talk to you and share the information, then probably it's not a good lender. You might want to look at someone else. If you showed any homes and you sent in applications, if you're working with rentals, this would be a way you could follow up and do that. So if you're sending in homes and follow up on homes that were sent in, if applications were showed, all that kind of stuff. Follow up on that. That should be in there as well on your calendar. I like to eat lunch, so I put lunch in my calendar, and during that hour for lunch or 45 minutes, whatever I take, I have my phone on Do Not Disturb. If it's that big of an emergency that it can't wait for that lunch time, then it's probably going to be screwed anyway when you get out of lunch. So we'll have to just see what happens. Um, around 3 to 4, I like to take a quick break. If I'm working during the whole day, I'm not on an appointment. I'll get up, I'll stretch, maybe have a little snack or something to juice, you know, an apple or whatever to get my energy back up and get moving. That just works for me. If you need those like I do, then feel free to go ahead and get those. An admin time is very important to me. I really like to do admin because, well, I don't really like to do it, but it has to be done. I like to get it on my calendar. This one I can follow up on all my other pre-approvals. This kind of ties in as well like following up on homes that were showed and everything like that, that can be part of your admin time. You don't want your calendar so overcrowded that you don't have any time for personal and family. So make sure you take time for that. So when you calendar, you should try to calendar. I, I do it from eight to six. I like to have it broken down pretty well Monday through Friday. I try to take the weekends off unless I'm showing or something, but usually I can do that because remember you control your calendar. No one else does. So you do that. I do from about 8 to 6. I try to be on my computer at 8.30, get up, do my thing. And then I break that down into the two-hour blocks of time. Now, if you don't want to do it for an hour, and if, like for lunch, of course, it would only be 45 minutes to an hour. Use common sense. But my usual thing, I try to do about two hours. If I'm doing like calls and, you know, admin, not just admin time, but following up and getting into it, then I might do a little bit longer on my call times, like maybe three to four hours. I might do a double block. The reason, oh, excuse me. the reason we do this, it usually takes people about 15 minutes to get ready for a task and about 15 minutes to get, you know, winding down before the next one. 
So if you have a two hour block and you're getting ready, you know, 8.30 comes around, I'm not quite ready. I don't get on my computer till nine. I lost, you know, 20, 15 or 8.45, I lost 15 minutes. And then, you know, I'm going from eight to 10 to make calls right around 10.45. I'm like, okay, what's happening at 11? Or, you know, what's, what's going on here? And then I can start thinking of my next time or whatever time frame I had at the time. That'd be three hours. So try to keep yourself as organized as you can. You're going to be much more productive, but it is very important to give yourself some free time as well. So I call it one shift and one flip per week. And that's your goal. So a shift is if you take like what you do in the morning, you put it to the afternoon and you change the afternoon to the morning. So for example, if I have my showing times from four to seven and someone's like, I can only see in the morning because I work nights. I'd be like, fine, that day, not an issue. I'll show you the home. That day I would do a shift and I would show in the morning, whatever I had in the morning, I would do that evening. And then a flip to say, I'm doing my, my showings on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and someone can only see Thursday. I would flip my Wednesday and Thursday. And then that way I would know, I would keep my calendar scheduled and it'd be very structured, but I could do that quick flip, shift or flip. Try this only once per week. You have a calendar, try to keep it. Don't jump all over the place. All right, and that's the lesson for today. Hopefully that gives you some good ideas about setting up your calendar and getting it started. If you have any questions, reach out to me. We'd love to answer them.